Once upon a time, as we say in the trade, there was a little orphan gal. Her name was Dorothy, and it still is even. She lived on a dinky little farm in Kansas with her Uncle Henry and her Aunt Em. But who was her closest friend? I'll tell ya. A little black dog with long black, silky hair and little black eyes named Whitey. I mean Toto. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a place that I've dreamed of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. There's a place that I've dreamed of once in a lullaby. Where troubles melt like lemon drops Away above the chimney tops That's where you'll find me Somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly Birds fly over the rainbow why then, oh, why can't I? Well, one day, Dorothy saw a cloud on the horizon, even. It was big and black, and from the north she heard something. A loud windstorm. Heavens to Murgatroyd, that sound could mean only one thing. A windy cyclone, and that's the worst kind. Toto and started to run, but it was too late. The cyclone struck. With Dorothy and Toto clinging to each other, the unfunny, funnel-shaped cyclone lifted the tiny house in the air, watuzied it around and around, and slowly lifted it into the sky, like a giant balloon even. If you can imagine a square balloon, heavens to Morpheus. Many hours later, the house kaplunked gently to the ground. Toto, where are we? Dorothy couldn't believe her eyes. She thought her eyes were telling lies, fibs even. They had landed in a strange, fantastical place of which she'd never seen the like, and she didn't like it. There was a babbling, bubbling brook running past the house. So being thirsty, Dorothy went out to get a drink. Well, you can imagine her startledness when she saw some wee people, leprechauns even. Before Dorothy could say word one to him, one of the pint-sized citizens approached Dorothy, walked over to her even. Welcome to the land of the munchkins. Please tell me where I am. You are in the land of Oz. But how can I get back to Kansas? Well, there is only one person who can help you. You must go to the City of Emeralds and see the Wizard of Oz. Perhaps he can help you. But how can I find the City of Emeralds? Simple. Just follow the yellow brick road. So Dorothy and Toto started their long journey down the yellow brick road. Exit to the Wizard of Oz. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Where is a wizard of a wiz, if ever a wiz there was. If ever, oh ever a wiz there was, the wizard of Oz is the one. Because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. <laughs> We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. 
walking for several miles. Dorothy sat down beside a cornfield to rest even. But she was startled when she heard a very strange voice. Good afternoon. Welcome to the land of Oz. Dorothy looked all around but saw no one. Nothing but a scarecrow hanging upon a long pole. Did you speak to me? Indeed I did. Who are you, little girl? My name is Dorothy. Where are you headed now, Dorothy? I'm on my way to the Emerald City to see the Wizard of Oz. Maybe he can tell me how to get back home. He can do anything. Anything? Perhaps he could help me. I'm not too bright, you know. Well, perhaps you didn't notice that. I would like to ask the Wizard to give me a brain. May I go with you, Dorothy? I could while away the hours Confirming with the flowers, consulting with the rain And why my head I'd be scratching While my thoughts are busy hatching If I only had a brain I'd unravel every riddle For my individual in trouble or in pain With, with the, the thoughts that you'd be thinking You could be another Lincoln If you only had a brain Oh, I could tell you why oceans near the shore I could think of things I never thought before and then I'd sit down and think some more I would not be just a muffin my head full of stuffing my heart full of pain and perhaps I deserve you and even would be even of you if I only had a brain why of course Mr. Scarecrow We'll all go together. So Dorothy, Toto, and their new friend, the brainless Scarecrow, started walking down the yellow brick road. Exit to the Emerald City. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear there is a wizard of a wizard, if ever a wizard of Oz. If ever, 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 ever the wizard of Oz, the wizard of Oz, it won't because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. A few miles down the road, Dorothy heard another very strange sound. Oh, oh. There in the forest, they saw a man made out of tin. He was holding an axe as if he was trying to chop down a tree. But he couldn't move, you see, being made of a cheap grade of tin. He'd rusted. What can we do for you, Mr... Uh, just call me Tin Man. I don't have a real name. If you can find an oil can and oil my rusty joints, I'd be much obliged. Wow. I feel like a new man. I'll just do your knees too, sir. And some of your ankles as well. There you are, Dorothy. Can you do the other side? How can I ever repay you guys? Thank you so much. It's not a problem, sir. When a man's an empty kettle, he should be on his metal, and yet I'm torn apart. Just because I'm presuming that I could be kind of human if I only had a heart. I'd be tender, I'd be gentle, and awful sentimental regarding love and art. I'd be friends with the sparrows and the boy who shoots the arrows if I only had a heart. Picture me on a balcony above a voice sings low. Where for art thou, Romeo? I hear a beat. How sweet! Just to register emotion, jealousy, devotion, and really feel the part. I could stay young and chipper and I'd lock it with a zipper if I only had a heart. Later, Dorothy explained that she was going to the Emerald City 
to ask the Wizard of Oz how to get back home. And the Scarecrow was going along to see if the wizard could give him a brain. Oh, wonderful. Say, uh, can I go too? Maybe the Wizard of Oz could give me a heart. You see, since I was built by a non-union tinsmith, I don't have a heart like most folks do. Of course. You're welcome to come along. We'll all go see the Wizard of Oz together. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he's a wizard of a whiz, if ever a whiz there was. If ever, ever a whiz there was, the wizard of Oz is one. Because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Soon, Dorothy and her new friends were walking through a deep, dark woods. I'm scared, guys. I know. There could be lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. And just at that moment, a huge, ferocious-looking lion leaped out of the dark woods. <laughs> Swipe of his paw, the lion slapped the scarecrow across the elephant road. And little Toto, forgetting how tiny he was, ran toward the big lion, barking ferociously. Put him up. Pull an axe on me, hey? How long are you gonna stay fresh in that can? <laughs> hey, hey man, I'll fight you with one man lift around my back. I'll fight you on one leg. Fight you all at once. <laughs> when Dorothy saw that little Toto was in danger, she rushed forward. She slapped the lion right in his proboscis, his nose even. Don't you dare bite Toto, you big bully! A big lion like you picking on a little puppy like Toto. <laughs> I am ashamed, as a matter of fact. But I'm afraid to roar at any big animals. They might... <laughs> they might clobber me, you see. I'm a cowardly lion. <laughs> yeah, it's sad, believe me, missy, when you're born to be a sissy without the vim and verve. But I could show my prowess be a lion, not a mouse, if I only had the nerve. I'm afraid there's no denying, I'm just a dandelion, a fate I don't deserve. I'd be brave as a blizzard, I'd be gentle as a lizard, I'd be clever as a gizzard. If the wizard is the wizard who will serve. Then I'm sure to get a brain, a heart, a home, the nerve. Why don't you come with us? Where are you going? <laughs> We're all going to the Emerald City to see the oh, Wizard of Oz. Can I be part of your gang? Do you think the wizard would give me the courage? What do you think, Dorothy? You should come with us to the Emerald City? Well, I don't see why not. What do you think, Tin Man? Absolutely, he's part of the Beads Boys. Beats, 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 beats! Off we go, guys! So Dorothy and her friends continued their long journey to the Emerald City. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is a wizard of a wizard, if ever a wizard there was. If ever a wizard a wizard there was, the wizard of Oz is one because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We've come such a long way already. <laughs> you call that long? Why, you just begun. Helping the little lady along, are you, my fine gentleman? Well, stay away from her, or I'll stuff a mattress with you. And you, I use you for a behind. Here, Scarecrow, want to play ball? <laughs> In 
Inside the Emerald City, Dorothy and her friends were led to a green palace and into a green throne room with walls, ceilings, floors, covered with beautiful green emeralds. In the middle of the room was a big green marble throne. Sitting on the throne, well, it wasn't exactly sitting, because it was nothing but a big head, no body, just a head. As Dorothy stared, wide-eyed, the big, bald head said, I am the great wizard of Oz. Who are you? And why have you come to see me? I'm Dorothy, and these are my friends. We've come to you for help. I will do all of you the favors you ask. But first, you must do me a favor. Of course, Mr. Wizard. What do you want us to do for you? Destroy the Wicked Witch of the West! Dorothy and her friends headed west into the setting sun. They had gone only 20 miles into the land of the Winkies before the Wicked Witch of the West spotted them. So, that wacky Wizard of Oz has sent some of his stooges to destroy me, hey? Well, we'll see about that! Said the witch, blowing on a silver whistle. And a big army of winged monkeys appeared in the castle as if by magic. All right, you winged monkeys! We're gonna try an aerial attack! Fly out there and destroy those strangers who dare enter my land! Roger! Said the captain of the flying monkeys. We'll go! Out and over! And the flying monkeys took off like a herd of birds to attack. <laughs> the winged monkeys flew straight to their target as Dorothy stood holding the frightened Toto in her arms. The winged monkeys lifted her up and flew away to the wicked witch's castle with her as Toto protested loudly. Rip, rip, rip. It looked like none of them would ever make it back to the Emerald City alive. little Toto, Dorothy grabbed a bucket of water and dashed it on the Wicked Witch, soaking her from head to toes, heels even. And then a fantastical thing happened, weird even. The Wicked Witch began to shrink. Down and down she melted until there was nothing left of the witch but a small puddle. Dorothy couldn't believe her eyes, but the Wicked Witch was no more. And so, they hurried back to Emerald City to ask the Wizard of Oz to grant him the favors he had promised. Soon, Dorothy and her friends arrived at the great gate of the Emerald City. Dorothy and her traveling companions entered the great green throne room of the Wizard of Oz. What brings you back to the great Wizard of Oz? I thought I told you I would grant no favors 
until the Wicked Witch was gone. But she is your wizardry. The Wicked Witch has melted. So we've come to ask you to help us. No, no, I'm not really the great wizard of Oz. I'm just a phony. I'm a, I'm a humbug. But what about my brain? So there you are, children of St. Pete. I told you things would work out in the end. They've made it to the Emerald City. Shall we give them their pledge and their promise for what they made that terrible journey for? Well, I think so. I think they've deserved it. Do you? Mr. Lion on the end, you were a big coward when you first arrived, but now you have the bravery of the strongest lion that's ever lived. Working in that office with Mrs. Liversidge is going to need it. As for you, Mr. Scarecrow, not much up here. I'm afraid nothing's going to change there. You'll forever be with a head full of straw. As for you, Tin Man, well, I think you deserve to delve into my happy hat. Oh, thank a you. A heart is what he deserves, and a heart he will have. Will he ever give it away? Will it ever be broken? We'll never, never know. And as for you, Dorothy, you get exactly what you wish for. What is it that you want most of all? I'm gonna go home. Go home? Do you think we should let Dorothy? Dorothy was happy about going home, but her eyes filled with tears as she waved goodbye to the big-hearted tin woodman, the wise scarecrow, and the lion-hearted lion. Scarecrow, I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm going to miss you too, Dorothy. Within hours, the great balloon kaplunked gently to earth, and Dorothy was safely back at home. When Dorothy's Aunt Em saw the little girl back home again, she cried with joy. Dorothy, oh my child, where on earth have you been? Well, said Dorothy, I've been to the land of Oz. Of course, Aunt Em thought Dorothy's story about the Wizard of Oz was just a lot of childish imagination. But we know better, don't we? Hmm? It's better than Oh, 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 oh,